Welcome to the Commonwealth Coordinated Care Plus Waiver Personal Care Updates Training, hosted by the Office of Community Living, a division of the Department of Medical Assistance Services. In this training, we will be going over updates to personal care services, including members under age 21, the supervision form, or DMAS 100, and the plan of care form, or DMAS 97AB. At the conclusion of this training, we will go over some recently and commonly asked questions and provide answers. As a, rem as a courtesy to all participants, please make sure you mute your phone and microphone for the duration of the training. Following discussion with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, a federal agency, a Medicaid memo was issued back on July 11, 2018, indicating that as of September 1, 2018, the following services for members on the CCC Plus waiver under the age of 21 must go through the EPSDT program for authorization. These services were personal care, private duty nursing, and assistive technology. The result of this change was a change in the evaluation criteria for these services. The CCC Plus waiver evaluates need as it relates to the goal of preventing institutionalization. EPSDT evaluates for medical necessity only. As a result of this change, a segment of the waiver population saw decreases in personal care hours. Following additional conversations with CMS, after, we are pleased to announce that as of May 1st, 2019, personal care hours can be authorized through the CCC Plus waiver for members under the age of 21. This is a return to the same evaluation method that was used prior to September 1, 2018. Please note that private duty nursing and assistive technology services will continue to be authorized through EPSDT for those members under age 21. As a result of this change for personal care services for members under the age of 21, EPSDT forms will no longer be required for these waiver members. This means that the DMAS-7 or EPSDT personal care services functional status assessment and DMAS-7A or EPSDT personal care program agency and consumer directed plan of care are no longer necessary. Instead, please submit the DMAS-99, DMAS-97AB and DMAS-100 if supervision is an applicable service. For members who experienced personal care hour reductions under EPSDT and indicate their needs are still not met, the provider or service facilitator may submit a new service authorization request after May 1, 2019 to have hours reviewed under the CCC Plus waiver criteria. Requests sent prior to May 1, 2019 will still be evaluated using EPSDT. Reminder, providers are required to ensure that services are adequate to meet the, the care and needs of the member and should review the plan of care at each quarterly visit. Next, we will be discussing some updates to the personal care forms, the DMAS 100 or supervision form, and the DMAS 97 AB or plan of care. These forms are available now under the provider portal under forms. A number of changes have been made to the DMAS 100, the supervision request form. New questions have been added to provide additional information to better assess the need for supervision. As a result, the form is now three pages. We'll be going over some of the questions very shortly. For participants under the age 12 and under, a question was added to please describe the support needs that are a barrier to participation in traditional childcare arrangements. A note was added as well that a work schedule may be requested for the primary caregiver to evaluate for supervision hours. Finally, an additional line was added to list the names of all adults living in the home and to provide the days and times in which they are away from the home and unable to provide supervision to the minor child. 
For school-age participants, a question was added to list the times the participant is out of the home for school, including time spent traveling to and from school. Lastly, a question was added to provide any additional information not addressed to further demonstrate a need for supervision. Updates were also made to the manual to clarify supervision. One update indicate, was changed to, set, to state, when members demonstrate a need, demonstrate a support need that is intermittent in nature, supervision must be considered as an option to provide coverage for, for participants who are not safe or have health risks that require immediate attention when the member is left alone. To clarify confusion regarding work at home and self-employed parents, the following language was added. In a case where supervision is needed for a participant when the caregiver is self-employed, a tax ID or business license may be requested. And as well, supervision may be needed when the primary caregiver is working in the home and is unable to provide the required supervision because of work requirements. The plan of care, or DMAS 97AB, was also updated. The assessment date was, was clarified to indicate the date in which the most current DMAS 99 was completed. Waiver language regarding to the DD waivers was removed. For special maintenance, an asterisk was added, indicating which tasks require a doctor's order. The level of care D and E fields were removed on the document. These fields were not used previously. Individuals can still receive 35 hours of personal, more than 35 hours of personal care a week. Simply check the ADLs and IADLs that apply. Mark the appropriate level of care based on the criteria in chapter four of the manual. Total the number of hours and include any supporting documentation to show the need for more than 35 hours per week. In addition, the 97AB also clarified that a backup plan is required for all participants and not just consumer directed services. Finally, instructions were further clarified to make the form easier to understand. On your screen now is a picture of one of the pages of the plan of care 97 AB. As you can see, the, the format of the document has, has not changed, just some additional questions and some, clarif and some cleanup on the form to make it easier. Some additional information. It is strongly encouraged to use these new forms immediately. Again, these forms are, are already available at the provider portal. Simply perform a form search and you'll be able to locate them. For fee-for-service individuals, KeyPro has, has indicated that they will continue to process the old forms until May 31st. As of June 1st, the new forms will be required in order for authorization. MCOs have also been notified and will establish their own deadlines for requiring the new form. For questions as to their deadlines, please contact the MCOs directly. The CCC Plus waiver manual is also under final review and should be posted in early May. A blast email will be sent out upon its posting. Those are the updates for the CCC Plus waiver that we have, so we're going to so provide some frequently asked questions as well as answers that providers and others, other individuals have been asking regarding the CCC Plus waiver and its updates of late. First, we'll be discussing the new forms and the plan of care. The first question, when can I start using the new 97AB or DMAS 100 form? Who are these new forms for and where can I find the forms? You can begin using the forms immediately. These forms should be used for all CCC Plus waiver individuals when completing a plan of care and or request for supervision. This presentation discussed individual members under the age of 21, but these forms are for all CCC Plus waiver individuals. And again, these are available on the provider portal. You can find them 
by performing a search on the provider forms search page. Just enter the number and the updated versions will be available. What if a, a DMAS 97AB was submitted using the old version to start care as of May 1, 2019? It will still be evaluated to begin effective May 1, 2019. In terms of key pros requirements, please keep in mind that the form will be the old form will be rejected beginning June 1, 2019. Please also keep in mind to contact the appropriate MCOs to know when they will no longer accept the old versions of the plan of care or supervision request forms. How can I how do I request more than 35 hours on the 97 AB without level of care D and E? These fields were irrelevant on the old form. The level of care A, B, and C are to indicate how many ADLs needs an individual has, not how much time an individual needs for care. Completing the 97AB to display with supporting documentation that the individual needs more than 35 hours per week is still the way to make such a request. Check all of the ADLs and IADLs that are necessary indicate the hours per week needed at the end of the table and if the amount is greater than 35 hours it will be reflected on the form. Keep, please note that the DMAS 99 must justify all hours over the level of care. If there's no change to the plan of care, can a provider sign the 97AB on behalf of the client or caregiver? No a client or caregiver's signature is required on the plan of care. Can we complete the section for IADLs for individuals under 21 now that they are no longer covered through EPSDT? You can. Please note that IADL time is for the individual's needs only. It is limited only to the individual and not the entire household. It is also not appropriate to request or to use IADL time when the IADL being performed is one that is expected to be performed by the household anyway. What if an individual's hours changed prior to May 1? How should we as a provider handle this? What if the household has a pending appeal for a change in hours? Should we still submit a new service authorization request as of May 1? We unfortunately cannot provide you with definitive guidance. However, if the household believes that the individual's situation necessitates a change in personal care hours, you may want to submit a new service authorization request. If the household wants to dispute the, the personal care authorization that was made prior to the change May 1, 2019, the appeal may need to be filed or kept. The appeal will discuss the decision that was made to change the individual's personal care hours previously. Please note, even with a new service authorization request, there is no guarantee that the new request will return the individual to the prior number of hours. Are individuals eligible for hours for personal care during the weekends? Some, some providers have been reporting that individu individuals are being rejected by some of the MCOs for weekend hours. Individuals are eligible on a case-by-case -case basis for personal care hours. This includes during the weekend, as they are all based on the individual's needs, and so long as documentation and the plan of care are there to support the need for such a request, they should be approved. Next, we'll be going over some questions regarding EPSDT, supervision, and other services available through the CCC Plus waiver. How does the May 1, 2019 EPSDT change affect Medallion 4.0 members, members over the age of 21 on the CCC Plus waiver, or individuals on the, on the, on the other long-term supports and services waivers? The answer is, is that it doesn't. This change only is for individuals under 21 on the CCC Plus waiver for personal care. All other persons are evaluated the same way as they previously were. What if a CCC Plus waiver child is receiving personal care hours while at school? Will those hours be evaluated under the CCC Plus waiver or EPSDT? Personal care hours for 
individuals under the age of 21, even those on the CCC Plus waiver, will still be evaluated through EPSDT when the individual is at school or work. Other home and community-based settings will be evaluated through the CCC Plus waiver as of May 1, 2019. Our doctor's order is still needed annually for children under 21 on the CCC Plus waiver. Only in situations that may require skilled nursing orders would a doctor's order be needed. Who completes the DMAS 100 request for supervision? The provider requesting the supervision or PERS should complete the form. A doctor does not need to complete the DMAS 100. Will all MCOs accept the new DMAS 100? Yes. Will supervision consider children's needs and parents' work schedules? This has always been the case for the supervision service. The expanded DMAS 100 form provides additional questions that allow for the household to further clarify why the supervision is needed, such as for which times all adults are out of the home working. What can we do if we have tried to get the DMAS 7 completed, but the doctor will not or has not done it yet? Please contact the EPSDT unit at epsdt at dmas.virginia.gov for assistance. If the primary caregiver is paid, can respite be approved? No. Respite is only for the unpaid primary caregiver. No paid primary caregiver and no individual his or herself can receive respite. Lastly, we'll be going over some additional questions that this, that this Office of Community Living has received in relationship to the CCC Plus waiver. If an individual has gone 30 days without services, do they need a new screening? No. If the individual has gone without services for a year, a new screening would be necessary. But so long as the individual is not due for a LOCRI, services can be initiated. Depending on how long it has been since the individual last received services within that year, you may still want to request a LOCRI to evaluate if the individual's needs have changed. If an individual has his or her services transferred to another provider, and I have not submitted all of my billing requests for that individual for payment, do I need to wait on transferring the individual's record to the new provider? Can I, can I file a claim after I have transferred the services? You can file a claim after you've transferred services, so long as the services were indeed rendered while you were providing a service to the individual and the claim is submitted within the appropriate time frame. How do I know if someone has been dropped from the waiver? To determine if someone's been dropped from the waiver, please log into the Medicaid provider portal and perform an eligibility check. Lastly, clients have been receiving letters about a town hall or a meeting. What is that about? Attendants and employers of records were sent notices for meetings in the central region in April 2019. The purpose of these meetings was to serve as a way to inform those individuals of CCC Plus waiver updates and their responsibilities in those roles. Additional sessions will be provided to individuals throughout the state during 2019, and letters will go out to the targeted populations. Please note these trainings are not for service facilitators, providers, or MCOs, only for attendants and EORs. That concludes this presentation. For future questions, you may contact us through one of two email inboxes. For CCC Plus waiver policy related questions, please send an email to the CCC Plus waiver at dmas.virginia.gov. For consumer directed or service facilitation payment questions or issues only, please send an email to cdsf at dmas.virginia.gov. Please do not send unrelated questions to either of these mailboxes, as the staff manning the boxes may be unable to answer and there may be delays in having your questions answered. Thank you for listening.